Welcome and hello. This is Caffeine Zombies with Bite Size News. Today is July 13th, 2024, and we'll be going over weddings and their expenses, corruption charges against a Democrat, AT&T losing all your sensitive data, Giuliani failing in all the ways Trump succeeds, and snake smuggling with a surprise on where they were carried. Let's jump right in. Getting married is already a big decision. Now add to that whether you should buy a new car, have a great vacation, or pay for a bunch of people to show up and mooch off of your generosity. Which would you choose? Weddings cost, and they cost a metric ass load of money. In 2019, they had risen to $28,000 with a drop during the pandemic to 19, and then right back up again. Today, they've hit an over $35,000. That's for the average wedding. And in some places like New York City, you are probably paying closer to $63,000. It's no wonder that many wedding services and blog sites are reporting more and more courthouse weddings and questions about them. You could buy a significant chunk of a house for the price of a wedding. Or a few good used cars or a college education or just invest it. Yeah. So what do you get when you pay $300? million dollars for one wedding. That's not a hypothetical. It's what really took place for Mukesh Abani's son and daughter-in-law, Anant Abani and Radhika Merchant. This wedding and wedding party has taken months to work through and may continue for a long, as long as they want, really, while stars are flown in from all over the world, including Justin Bieber, Rihanna, the Backstreet Boys, Katy Perry, and a lot more. John Cena showed up, along with many other actors and actresses. Why? Because it's like making a movie in terms of what you get paid, but all you have to do is go to a party. This is the epitome of that divide between what the rich and the poor can do. When the poor need to scrape up to cover a minor medical emergency or a courthouse wedding, and others in this world could pay for hundreds of millions of those very same things or just have one big party. It seems wrong. And now a stark divide between Democrats and Republicans. Senator Bob Menendez has been on trial, and the jury is now deliberating on whether or not Bob traded political power for luxurious bribes. He's almost certainly, hopefully, going to be found guilty because there's an abundance of evidence, and his wife is also on trial. He also later lied about it and tried to cover it up. He got lavish gifts, basically in exchange for working against and voting par against particular enemies of those giving him those gifts, like working with the Qatari government against Egypt. He's got 16 counts against him, ranging from bribery to corruption to all sorts of other things. And he's still attempting to run for office. I mean, what kind of weirdo runs for office when it's been proven that they're guilty of multiple crimes and felonies? That just seems weird. Of course, now he has to run as an in independent. I say this as a difference because you, you don't have Democrats circling the wagons to promote the senator to say he did uh, nothing wrong. You don't have them trying to get Supreme Court justices in to accept the, the who already accept bribes themselves um, to say it's just fine, nor that this quid pro quo issues are you know, perfectly acceptable as part of his office. Speaking of not getting away with it, Rudy Giuliani attempted to file bankruptcy to get out of the settlement of $148 million in his defamation case. This was dismissed, the bankruptcy. And now that he's been disbarred for lying on behalf of Trump's election fraud, maybe he too will now have to sell pillows to pay for this defamation ruling. And now for something I find completely ridiculous. A man attempting to cross between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, China, was caught smuggling 104 snakes in his pants. Forget about snakes on a plane. Snakes in my pants needs to be a movie about this guy. The only question is, can we get Samuel L. Jackson to play the lead role? 